Hello, everyone. It's Becky here. So I am embarking on a big trip to New York City, leaving Vancouver Airport right now, and taking the JetBlue airline all the way to New York, which takes about five hours. Here we are. In just a few hours, it's morning time now.、Uh, almost landing. Hello, New York. It's nice to see you for the very first time. And here we are, safe landing. At the JFK airport, and here I am. Hello, super excited for my upcoming trips around the city.、Uh, so our hotel is actually close to Flushing Main Street. Yeah. So after checking in, having lunch, we are going to Central Park、uh, by the subway, which is much slower compared to the Vancouver SkyTrain system. I love these penguins. There are a lot of these cute little murals on the walls of the subway stations. And wow, here we are, right outside Central Park. And the weather is bright and sunny, so I was very grateful to have like five straight days of sunshine while I was visiting New York, and admiring all of these skyscrapers, old and new, here surrounding Central Park. Yeah, these skyscrapers are much taller than the ones we have in Vancouver. And lots of people here taking pictures with the skyscrapers. I really like this place、uh, at Central Park. I think it's called Sheep's Meadow over here. So first of all, I need to fuel myself with coffee. I barely slept on the airplane, and here we are,、uh, the most busiest area of Central Park. Lots of people. The Heritage Fountain. Now coming back to the sheep's meadow, I'm ready to sit down on the lawn. Hi everyone, and do a sketch. So here's my simple set of materials. I've got my beloved、uh, Sailor Brand Few Day、uh, fountain pen, and my two water brushes from Holbein. One is large tip, the other one is a、uh, medium tip, and my Mongyo watercolors with twelve colors in it, and my towel to clean my brush tips. And I'm using、uh, Etcher Mixed Media Sketchbook right now, and here's my coffee, of course. Need that, and the view in front of me. Okay, so now I did a very quick three-minute pencil layout just so I make sure I want to include all the skyscrapers I want to include. And these buildings are really abstract. Most of them are rectangular prisms, as you can see.、Um, very.、Um, Abstract and geometrical. Okay, of different heights. Some are pretty short. Some are extremely tall. And just relax, capturing these skyscrapers one after another from the left to the right. And、um, I see some overlappings of these、uh, rectangular prism shapes as well. Some buildings are a little bit unique with、um, irregular rectangular shapes. And this one is very clearly. A rectangular prism that we can see two sides of that building. Some are pretty flat that we can only see one side only of that、uh, rectangular prism. And yeah, so that's the silhouettes for these buildings. I'm gonna come back to the inner details later. Now I really want to start drawing these trees lining up on the bottom of these buildings in the middle ground. Yeah, and this beautiful curve of the、uh, the lawn. On the bottom of these trees, as a great support, and then starting to add these tiny humans, and then keep、uh, building up this little forest in the middle ground by adding the fluffy canopies of the trees,、uh, focusing on the fluffy shapes, very much like clouds overlapping each other, and then、uh, the major branches connecting together, merging together into、uh, the tree trunk. And then keep adding more little people there in the far distance. I think adding people in urban sketches is always important to、uh, give a sense of proportion, and also perspective that the, the trees and the buildings behind they are very very gigantic compared to the humans. Yes,、yeah, so、I captured a gesture of a guy here sitting down, stretching out、uh, his legs, super relaxing, and then keep adding more tree trunks in between. Uh, using squiggly lines to suggest the fluffy inner texture of these trees canopies. Okay, I think now I'm ready to add a bit of、um, abstract inner detail for these buildings. Most of the lines that I see are、um, straight lines, going horizontally or vertically. At the same time, adding a bit of accentuations for the outlines of each of these buildings. Yeah, as you can see, very simple crisscross lines. 
and just zooming in a little bit so you can see the details of these lines that I'm making. My speed is pretty rapid because the faster we draw, the more lively these lines are gonna look, okay? So my speed is actually pretty quick. The, is, this drawing speed that you're watching right now is four times faster than my actual drawing speed. And I see some windows are tiny little pockets of squares and some more quick slashing lines going vertically. Yeah, and these ones over here, dividing the buildings into uh, sections. Yeah, so just relax and summarize what you see. There are actually a slight bit of inaccuracies that I'm making, but I'm always embracing all my mistakes. And uh, again, these imperfect lines, they look more interesting than mechanically produced lines with rulers or, or like AI, that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, adding a bit more accentuation with solid brown ink and then some more loose crisscross lines for these buildings here in the middle and little tiny dots to suggest windows. Yeah, some more over here. All of these buildings have, you know, glassy surfaces and um, yeah, quick uh, short horizontal lines and then building up the trees canopies in overlapping fluffy shapes here on the bottom. Yeah, and I'm um, trying to keep connecting the bottom part of these buildings with the tree canopies and keep adding more details. Um, yeah, okay, and um, just keeping these lines super loose and natural. So I love the way that the, uh, the sheep's meadow here is the little oasis in the middle of the super busy area of New York City on Fifth Avenue. And uh, yeah, adding some more people, kneeling down on their picnic towel, chatting with each other, some more people walking around in the far distance. Yeah, so these people, I'm also including these people in different sizes. So the man there on the, on the lower left, he looks pretty big because he's closer to me. And then the girls in the middle ground, they are a little bit smaller than the guy because they are a little far away. And those tiny people walking closer around the trees, they look even tiny. Yeah, so I see each of these buildings has a bit of its own character, especially this one. I see a lot of crossing lines and also um, some panels of glassy areas. It's more like solid black, pretty much like a deep blue or deep purple. Um, and some more little broken lines and quick dashes very quick uh, vertical lines for this one over here. Some lines is, is done with a harder hand pressure. And that's pretty much all the details for the buildings now. Just finishing the lovely slope here towards the right and adding some more fluffy textures. And don't forget the tree trunks for some of these trees. Adding some more tiny people sitting down um, on their picnic towel. Yeah, again. These two are a little bit bigger because they're closer to me, really pay, paying attention to the sense of depths. And a guy walking past by. Yeah, and keep adding some more people. So most of these people's heads are very tiny little circles. So when we're drawing people, so make sure that you don't make their heads way too big. Okay, so the last part of the drawing process is to add some heavier shading for the, uh, the in-between area of the trees, which is a really intense uh, green, okay, uh, brownish green. There we are. So here's the view in front of me and my finished line work. It took me about uh, 30 minutes to draw. So now I'm ready to have fun to uh, breathe life into this uh, urban sketch. As always, I'm starting to paint the sky area first by wetting it with clear water. Now punching on this uh, pretty vibrant diluted yellow ochre for the bit of sunshine, um, seeping through the clouds. So it's getting a bit cloudy now, so hopefully uh, rain is not on the way. All right, so just kind of diffusing this yellow a little bit with the clear water, uh, making sure I don't have too many hard edges or brush marks. And now punching on uh, this diluted cerulean blue, which is a really refreshing color, the little pocket of sky closer to the horizon, blending on a little bit more um, concentrated cerulean blue. So this is like a really quick wet onto wet technique of two values of cerulean blue uh, using various brush marks to depict the, uh, the sky 
uh, the blue sky uh, pushing through the clouds here closer to the horizon. Now I'm ready to add on the shade color for these clouds. So this is a mix of cobalt blue and a little bit of royal purple. And using these diagonal brush marks for um, a sense of perspective and to suggest the movement of these clouds. So usually when we're looking at clouds in the sky, most of the time they're moving like diagonally. Um, now, blending on a bit of more royal purple to spice up the saturation. So cloudy skies are always fun to paint for me. I don't see neutral grays, but I see a lot of lively blues and purples. Okay, I think that's it for the sky. I don't like to overwork my sky. So once I think I capture the colors and the atmosphere, uh, I just stop and move on to the next part. So now I just wetted the foliage area with clear water. For the first layer of these trays, I wanna add these charming uh, golden color. So this is a mix of yellow ochre, a little bit of lemon yellow, and a tiny bit of lime green. So I want to accentuate the golden color a bit more. Uh, these trees are still mostly green. Only the tops are turning a little bit of yellow, yellow orange. Okay, now the bottom of the trees are more green. So blending on a bit of lime green for the bottom half of most of these trees. Yeah, I think after a few more weeks, these, tr these trees are gonna look even more fancy and beautiful, but anyway, um, they're beautiful still right now. Um, okay, here I am. Keep on painting, enjoying the moment, being in New York for the very first time. This is my first stop in New York, Central Park. And keep punching on some more orange for the tree tops just to accentuate their charm. All right, using smaller brush strokes of orange mixed with a tiny bit of yellow ochre. All right, so these trays are not completed yet. I need contrast for the bottom part, uh, for their shaded areas. So this is a uh, hooker screen, okay? Just for the bottom part, especially the bottom edges of these trees closer to the metal, closer to the metal's edge. And here I am really having fun to blend all of these colors together. And yeah, keep laying down some more hooker screen. To make the hooker screen an even darker tone, I like to mix in burnt sienna into it, okay, for some extremely dark shaded areas. And I see some of the trees behind in the back row, they are looking pretty dark as well. Um, so I am gonna grab some more dark shades of green for the trees behind, as you can see here. And this dark shade of green is a little diluted with water. So the bright golden yellow on the bottom layer is still shining through these dark shades of green. So that's the magic about, um, about watercolors. When you're doing layering, you are always working with the uh, interaction of colors in layers. Okay, so I think that's it for now for the tree canopies. Now I'm ready to paint in these skyscrapers, starting with these warm colors, these older uh, brick buildings uh, in the front row. And this one as well. Here I am working intently on my sketch, really enjoying uh, my first time here in New York City, starting off at Central Park. So uh, the colors for the foliage are drying off a little bit and not too wet. I'm adding some stronger shade of uh, green on the bottom of the tree's canopies. And then keep adding a bit more warm colors. And then moving on to the coat colors of turquoise and blues for these glassy skyscrapers. Uh, playing with cobalt blue, viridian green, and mixing various ratios of each of these colors you're going to create different types of blues and turquoise if you mix in a tiny bit of pink or royal purple you're going to get a nice purplish shade color for some of the areas of the skyscrapers okay now i want to paint the first layer for the lawn area which is a really lovely play of yellow ochre uh, yellow ochre mixed with lime green for fresh sunshine yellow green color around the edge of the lawn up there, the shadow of the trees. So punching on uh, streaks of viridian green.
Yeah, so when I'm painting this seemingly flat lawn area, I'm using at least three, now probably four, different shades of greens. So if you're only using one color to paint pretty much anything, it's going to look very static and dull. So watercolors and also any art medium play with various values and shades of that, um, that single color. Okay, now I'm punching on some uh, darker shades of blues and purples, playing with cobalt blue and a little bit of royal purple to shade um, some of these glossy skyscraper areas in little units of brush strokes. So now I'm holding my brush pretty much perpendicular to the surface of the paper, so I'm able to get in these teeny tiny brush marks in. So again, keeping the very first layer of these skyscrapers, a very light uh, blue turquoise value, and then the second layer, a denser blue uh, purplish value, which just creates an illusion of shiny glassy surfaces. And yeah, it takes some time of practice to kind of get the balance between the lighter and the darker shades of the blues and turquoise, and also other color schemes as well. Um, okay, and just keep it loose. Adding a little bit more renderings for the bottom of the trees. The trees are pretty close to the uh, central focus of my picture, so they need to look more uh, heavily weighted. So now I'm punching on an even stronger shade color of green. It's better to do it now than before because uh, the previous layers are all dried and these brush marks won't get really uh, faded off by the wet paint below. Okay, so again, I mix even more burnt sienna into Viridian Green. Yeah, and for the trees behind, to push the foreground trees a little closer forward. Okay, so now there is a stronger sense of depth with these trees. Okay, there are um, some trees more in the front and the other ones more in the back, uh, playing with the illusion of various shades, colors of green. And again, accentuate the shadows uh, on the edge of the lawn. And now I'm ready to just write down the place Central Park, my very first stop in New York City. And then I'm ready to play with the fancy colors for, to paint these people's outfits, the purples, the reds, mostly from memory because many people uh, have moved away. Um, a lot of people these days, they like to wear a gray or very dark colored outfits, but I still try to want to have some stronger, beautiful colors like uh, purples and reds. And don't forget the shadows for these people using a darker shade of green. Final polish, that's it. Here's the look of my finished sketch. It took me one hour and 15 minutes to draw and paint here on location at Central Park, New York City. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more amazing adventures around New York City and also back in Vancouver in the future. So in my next video, I'll be sketching the Brooklyn Bridge. So see you soon. Bye. Enjoy your day.